Have you ever noticed how people who are particularly ignorant of the internet call 4chan or Newgrounds a social media platform? I've heard this from boomers who still think that TV is a new technology. They have no idea what the internet is, and they're just using the terms they hear their grandkids saying. But I've also heard it from Zoomers who only consume online content through whatever apps come preloaded on their smartphone. To them, the entire internet is literally just whatever is in front of the curtain. I guess as a millennial, I got lucky. My youngest years were in an era before the internet, and I still got a taste of that it's summer, go outside with your friends and be home by dinner time experience. But when I finally did make my way online, it was amazingly decentralized. Each community had its own website, its own form, its own type of service, when nowadays they're all on Twitter or YouTube or whatever. You can definitely see different species of sites emerge as time went on. We call Twitter a social media platform, but what it really is, is a microblogging service, a place where you can post short-length random thoughts in a timeline structure. Facebook operates this way too, same with Gab, Parler, Getter, and Truth Social. They're all microbloggers. To contrast, YouTube and TikTok, though they're also considered social media, they're not microbloggers. 4chan's an image board, like 2chan and 7chan and 420chan, and all the other chans that have popped in and out of existence. And hey, just as a side note, do you remember that one 4chan April Fool's prank where Moot added a cross post to Facebook option and a bunch of retards thinking it was a troll ended up putting porn and shit all over their normie Facebooks for their parents to see? Uh, that was good times. Point is, the phrase social media seems to have morphed into a Gen Z term for what we used to call a website, when there's actually multiple different types of sites, from forums to blogs to video platforms. The streamer Destiny's website, destiny.gg or DGG, was kind of hard to quantify using this paradigm, at least for me. Here was my thought process on it. It's certainly a repository of his stream and YouTube content, but it also serves partially as his blog, his merch store, and even his forms. And it's got a particular slick feeling that makes it stand out beyond other portals, like Channel Awesome or Newgrounds. Also, as somebody who's not really a part of the Twitch politics side of the internet, when I first noticed that Vosh's website, VGG, was basically a carbon copy of Destiny's, I figured that this was some sort of shared plugin system or drop and run setup that was common among this community. I don't know, is it called a, a GG site? Is that what we're talking about here? That's when I discovered what I thought was the source of these sites, a service called White Leaf or White Forest, run by a person named White Nervosa. Turns out White Leaf is the type of website, White Forest is the company providing it, and White Nervosa is the person. White Forest is legally a worker co-op, with nine members, one member, one vote. They operate White Leaf sites, as well as doing merch fulfillment, thanks to the financial support of Vosh. Their stated goal is to provide an accessible and independent platform for content creators, and they do have an extensive list of reasonably high-profile leftist people they host. The ones that I recognize personally are Vosh, Shoe on Head, Keffels, Chris Ray Gunn, The Surfs, Dylan Burns, Conur, who is some femboy in Vosh's polycule, Merrick, Xander Hall, The Deer Girl, Demon Mama, and Counterpoints, who's actually a Burkean conservative, not a leftist, which initially made me think this service might have been apolitical, just used primarily by leftists. But of course, that's actually not the case. Though the White Forest Company is kept afloat by patrons, it's also directly funded by Vosh. The fine print reads, no White Leaf users are necessarily affiliated with or endorsed by White Nervosa or other members of White Forest. The only content creators that pay White Forest are Vosh or those who choose to be a patron. And then I noticed another interesting tidbit down there. Website Framework is a derivative work from DGG, Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0. That's right, DGG is not on the list of White Leaf sites. DGG isn't a White Leaf site, all of the White Leaf sites are ripoffs of DGG. There's a fella in Destiny's community named Cake. He does a lot of the tech work over there. I've had a couple of casual conversations with him. Nice guy, seems competent. He put out a history of DGG to set the record straight. The code behind DGG was open source and available for anyone to use because Destiny wanted other content creators to have something they could use for themselves to help bootstrap their own careers. In early 2019, White Nervosa took the DGG code and made a variant of it for Vosh, VGG, which eventually became the White Leaf template. There was actually early drama between Cake and White Nervosa, as Cake provided his assistance believing his work was going towards White Nervosa's own site, not Vosh's site, or to create a service for many other creators. As somebody relatively new to this section of the internet, this stunned me. How the hell was it that all of these people who hate Destiny have the gall to blatantly rip off his site code, even going so far as to say Destiny's got nothing to do with it? Alright, here's where I would have subbed in that viral clip of Keffels from last summer, streaming during the opening of her own White Leaf site, KGG, where she made the claim that her site was actually not ripped off from Destiny's, and he had nothing to do with it. I remember seeing that clip all over the place back then. It must have been retweeted back onto my timeline at least a few dozen times, but by January 2023, it seems to have vanished from the internet.
Oh well, I'm sure you all remember it. It feels kind of like people trying to say that J.K. Rowling isn't the real creator of Harry Potter now that her turf views have come to light. Or the Five Nights at Freddy's guy doesn't count as the creator after it came out he was pro-life. It's not hard to see how we got into this point. I've done a lot of videos on this topic before. Mindless consequentialism, truth is downstream from power, just make reality whatever serves the politics, y you know the story at this point. Because of the volatility between destiny and, like, all of the people using White Leaf sites, this was obviously going to blow up eventually. And it did, with the deplatforming of Rose Wrist. Rose Wrist is some young Shoda kid who used to be a streamer. I think he gave it up to go to school or something. He's very progressive, very much a Nordic model kind of guy, but he is not a revolutionary socialist. During the Trump era, he and many others like him sided with the socialists online. But post-Trump, Rose Wrist is another casualty on a long list of casualties from the internet's socialist slash social liberal split. Rose Wrist helped Destiny with his huge manifesto on Keffels. As far as I know, not in terms of digging up information, but in terms of grammar and spell checking, and also working over his logical inferences. In other words, not on content, but on presentation and polish. In response, Rose Wrist's white leaf site, rosewrist.com I think it was, was made to redirect to the Drop Kiwi Farm site that Keffels put up. Here's the DMs between Rose Wrist and White Nervosa. Did you change my website? White Forest has voted, worker co-op remember, to discontinue service to your site. I wish you the best of luck. Okay, I understand. Can you then fully detach all your stuff from my purchased domain so that it's just a dead link? You own the domain. Yes, but you know that I'm not particularly adept when it comes to website stuff. I could probably figure out how to disconnect it myself, but I just wanted to ask. Cake charges $3,000 and then $150 a month for the services you were given. You cannot ask me for help, no. Okay, so to be clear, you won't even detach the stuff you've attached to my domain after you decided to drop it? To be clear, it is your domain. If you don't understand that I can't detach it from my servers, that's not my problem. Sure, but you're doing something to redirect it to drop Kiwi Farms, right? Good luck. Thanks for all your help over the past two years. I appreciate it. Good luck to you too. Your words ring hollow, but I hope you grow to understand my position. Here's the tech explanation of what's going on. When you put in a website into your browser, google.com for example, your computer communicates with the domain name registrar. Google owns the domain name google.com, and the registrar links that domain with an IP address, in this case 142.251.42.100. If you were to type that set of numbers into your browser, you'd go to the Google homepage. And believe it or not, in the very early internet, there was no domain names, only IP addresses. You had to memorize which addresses led to which sites, like telephone numbers without profiles attached. So, the IP address is the number of a physical computer somewhere on the internet that hosts the website. And the domain name is a shorthand for that address, registered with the registrar. Rose Wrist owns the domain name, rosewrist.com, and he asked his registrar to have it point to the IP address of his White Leaf site, hosted by White Forest. But what White Nervosa did was have the IP address on White Forest's end redirect to the Keffel's Drop Kiwi Farms page. All Rose Wrist had to do to remedy the situation was to log into his registrar and have it point at a different IP. But Rose Wrist, not being very tech savvy, didn't know any of this, something that White Nervosa knew he was ignorant of. That's why the only reply given when Rose Wrist asked, you're doing something to redirect it to Drop Kiwi Farms, right? Was good luck. No admission of guilt or innocence, no confirm or denial, just have fun figuring it out, fuck you. I should point out that Rose Wrist, like every other creator with White Forest, with the exception of Vosh, didn't pay for a White Leaf site. And White Nervosa retains the right to stop working with anyone at any time. Nothing illegal's been done here, but it's certainly pretty scummy behavior, taking advantage of Rose Wrist's ignorance on tech topics. And eventually, Rose Wrist released a detailed manifesto describing his experience working with White Forest, where it became clear that this wasn't the only scummy thing White Nervosa had done. Here is a list of nine complaints Rose Wrist had regarding his time affiliated with White Forest. One, he was not given an opportunity to make his case when White Forest voted to discontinue service. Two, he was not even given notice that such a vote was happening. Three, he was not even given notice that services to his website had stopped and only found out several days later. Four, he did not consent to White Forest and White Nervosa changing the server connected to his domain to make it redirect to a website that they knew he was opposed to. 5. He was not given notice that this redirection was happening. 6. He was treated rudely by White Nervosa when he inquired into the changes. 7. He was publicly ridiculed for this interaction by White Nervosa. 8. He did not receive any follow-up regarding the handling of sensitive connections or information of his or of the users who used his website. 9. He did not receive any assistance with resetting the DNS setting from White Nervosa who knew he was incapable of doing so. As a client of White Forest, you can, without notice or chance to defend yourself, have your services discontinued, because the nine members of the co-op have decided to vote you out, and you won't even be told about it. You can have your domain redirected to a website you are publicly opposed to. You can be humiliated, publicly and privately, by White Nervosa herself. You can be ignored when you ask about the handling of sensitive information stored on the site. 
and you can be left high and dry in trying to undo the damage they've caused. White Forest's stated goal of providing an accessible and independent platform for content creators seems to be a false one, at least if you happen to assist the guy who originated the code they aped in the first place. After this whole thing blew up and White Nervosa was dragged on Twitter for it, Rose Rist received an apology DM saying, I truly don't wish you deplatformed. Yeah, alright. Also, White Nervosa admitted to being drunk during the whole thing, which is, um, okay. However, the apology only applied to the public ridiculing. White Nervosa doubled down on everything else. In one Twitter exchange, White Nervosa says, Rose Rist agreed to our standard operating procedure. Is asked, is your standard operating procedure to redirect someone's domain name to a completely different website they don't want to be affiliated with? A White Nervosa supporter chimes in with, this is industry standard operating procedure. When you suspend a service, it is not uncommon to redirect it to the provider's homepage or a contextually relevant site, and is replied to with, the drop Kiwi Farm site is absolutely not contextually relevant. White Nervosa says, he called Keffels a terrorist for attempting to get Kiwi Farms taken down. It is absolutely relevant. What actually happened here is that at one point during the Kiwi Farms drama, Keffels was pointing out that Kiwi Farms was hosted in Ukrainian server farm, and then posted its location, implying that Ukrainian partisans may want to attack it because Kiwi Farms hosts Russian propaganda. Destiny described this in his manifesto as calling for terroristic violence, the manifesto that Rose Rist edited for grammar and logic, and specifically not content. To write Nervosa, this was Rose Rist calling Keffels a terrorist. The reply guy asks, so you're purposely redirecting his domain name to a website for a cause he specifically doesn't agree with, and that's somehow morally okay to you? And White Nervosa simply replies, yes. White Nervosa also made a big dance around that standing operating procedure of theirs, stating White Forest discontinues sites that have been inactive for more than 90 days. When this happens, there is a default screen for if there's nothing to catch the URL. Rose Rist had passed the mark, handling over two dozen websites that wasn't a top priority after he contributed to and endorsed a document calling for Cloudflare to protect Kiwi Farms, it became a priority. This was Sunday. He didn't notice until Wednesday, which is when I acted poorly towards him. I regret that and apologize. Anybody who claims it's because he dared attack Keffels ignores that he streamed in July critiquing Keffels. This was not an issue. You literally just mentioned one tweet ago that it was about the Keffels document, you fucking moron. Of course, people began to notice all the holes in this argument. The dear gender person hadn't streamed in six months, but is still on White Forest. White Nervosa replied, Oh, it's because she's still getting automated donations. This idea that Rose Wrist wasn't getting any automated donations is weird to me. Rose was small, but still doing well. Well enough to have some automated subs or something. But White Nervosa, who is the only one with access to the logs, stated, Nope, Rose had no donos, don't question it. Even though Rose Wrist provided proof of many donations during that time. Moreover, Rose Wrist did in fact stream during the 90-day period, nine times, and you can see the distinctive White Leaf chat overlay in those streams. White Nervosa then claimed that Rose Wrist asked for his site to be deleted, which Rose Wrist's own DMs disprove, and then finally claims that it actually is about Keffels, saying it would not be brought back up assuming he maintained his endorsement. Dude, at this point, just bite the bullet. Say it was a power move and that you did it because you're in charge and you didn't like what Rose Wrist did off-platform. We know that's why you did it. You know that's why you did it. All this dancing around just makes you look like even more of a fucking snake. For a while, I believe that White Nervosa, as a person, was just a side story to the larger Keffel's drama. A little extra bit of an intermission in between the real happenings. But now, I think White Nervosa is actually a lull cow in her own right. And the reason I've come to that conclusion is the Chud Logic drama. All the stuff with Rose Wrist was months ago. It was involving White Nervosa's capacity at the head of a business, and it involved Keffels. But now, White Nervosa herself is just going nuts over literally nothing. Let's check it out. On January 17th, White Nervosa tweeted this. I'm out of my mind, Chud Logic, but is there any reason you're paying a person who felt the need to tweet this twice? Are you too lazy to find another editor? Are they doing it for scraps off the plate so it's worth it? Is there no connection you feel? This is in response to Drift King Edits, also known as DK, Chud's editor, tweeting the following in quick succession. Not really sure what's going on, but Andrew Callahan definitely didn't rape that young lady. Followed by, not really sure what's going on, but Andrew Callahan definitely raped that young lady. Now, I'm not really sure what's going on with Andrew Callahan, but I'm pretty sure this is a joke. It's literally the cover all your bases thing. And White Nervosa was offended by it, to the point that she went to Chud Logic and did the cancel culture, why is he your editor thing. Chud's response was to point out that while White Nervosa is tagging him into the tweet, making it look like to her followers that she's inviting him to have a conversation, she's actually got him blocked. He can't see it, so it looks like he's ducking her. But he replied anyway, simply saying, I will never kowtow to the gay retarded sensibilities of leftoids. Based. Always reject the struggle session. The Twitter cancelling attempt went nowhere, so White Nervosa took it a step further by reporting Chud's Twitch channel to Twitch because he called her a gay retard on Twitter. And even though Twitch's off-platform policies can be kinda ridiculous, even they weren't ridiculous enough to take this bait. 
Twitch has explicitly told me that it's okay that the partner Chud Logic has called me another partner, a gay retard. Take that as you will and do as you wish off platform, as long as it's not an imminent threat. Well, yeah, Twitch's off service conduct policy states that Twitch will ban you if you do any of the following off platform. 1. Engage in deadly violence or terrorism or terroristic recruiting. 2. Explicit and or credible threats of mass violence. 3. Explicit and or credible threats against Twitch. 4. Leadership, membership, sponsorship of a known hate group. 5. Carrying out or acting as an accomplice to sexual assault. 6. Sexual exploitation of youth. 7. Compromising the physical safety of the Twitch community. 8. Harmful misinformation. How does any of this stuff apply to Chud Logic calling White Nervosa a gay retard? It's not terrorism or violence. It's not a credible threat. It's not membership in a hate group, unless you count the Chud Nation. It's not sexual assault or exploiting youth or threatening the safety of Twitch. And perhaps most explicitly of all, it's not misinformation either. White Nervosa continued to complain about Twitch refusing to take action on off-site behavior beyond what's listed. And the reason why is explicitly because she wants Chud Logic deplatformed. Hey, and like with Rose Wrist, at least she has the balls to say it directly this time. Or maybe it's because Chud's an easier target among leftoids than Rose Wrist was. Who knows? Chud's reply was to call White Nervosa a disgusting freak who has no problems with abusing power, and is now making a concerted effort to deplatform him. White Nervosa mocks the concerted effort bit by saying she sent one email, and she actually doesn't really care, despite, of course, being the one who started the Nothing Burger and pushing her followers to go at it. Chud's editor, DK, returned to write a lengthy anime villain post about how basically White Nervosa is a fraud hack who will fade away because everything she's ever done that's noteworthy has been stolen by others and the next wave of innovation will be the end of her 15 minutes of fame. The backlash White Nervosa received from all of this nonsense was enough to make her leave Twitter for a few days, but only a few. These people always come back eventually. White Nervosa is also a moderator for Vosh's community, though she may be on a break from that position for a while. She's friends with him. She still runs his site. She gets paid by him and was a mod for a long time. While White Nervosa was offline, some other Vosh mod, Thena, publicly continued the crusade in her place, repeating the calls for Twitch to ban Chud. But more notably, she went into Vosh's community and began petitioning Vosh viewers to join in on the dogpile, saying that Chud is violating his Twitch partner contract by harassing her over her gender identity. Excuse me, but where the fuck did this happen? Come on, you really think you can just go on the internet and make shit up? Afterward, Thena banned Chud from VGG and the Vosh subreddit, as well as a bunch of other people who aren't even in these communities, but have publicly spoken out against White Nervosa, most notably Stardust, who's been laughing at all this nonsense on her stream. Now, these people have the right to run their shitty little communities however they like, but this is just like 2015, 2016 all over again, where the leftoids won't tolerate anybody who disagrees with them even a little bit, and will go scorched earth on everyone who steps out of line. And I'm not being hyperbolic. There was also the White Nervosa Deny Milkshakes drama. Deny Milkshakes is some other flavor of leftist. These people always eat each other. And last fall, these two nobodies were at war. Deny Milkshakes said, Japanese nuclear bombings were genocidal terror apologia, and he would block anyone who was partisan in favor of the bombings. Nervosa replied, calling him indistinguishable from a tanky, and that he was making light of the Holocaust. Just so we're clear, there's a reason that socialists look at every other socialist except themselves and see fascists. White Nervosa, a totally sane person, replied to deny milkshakes by threatening to, if he did not agree to a streamed debate with her, block him, block his followers, and punish everyone using White Forest by deplatforming all of them. Well, ho hold on there. I thought this was a worker co-op, White Nervosa. I thought you needed a vote of the nine crumb tubers who run the whole thing in order to be able to do something like this. This is how the leftoid worker democracy always degenerates into an authoritarian shithole, by the way. It's always because another leftist disagrees with them and they can't accept disunity among the proles. The backlash to this event was severe, way more than anything related to Tread Logic, to the point that White Nervosa scrubbed the internet of it in an effort to get people to forget it ever happened. But the internet never forgets. And get a load at what the internet remembered. To be more specific, they said they were okay with Keffels, Xanderhal, Roserist, Vosh, Merrick, and several others being deplatformed because they refused to have a conversation about calling me a genocide apologist. Are you serious, bitch? You were the one with the finger on the off switch. This is nobody else's fault but your own. Why in the fuck would you ever get yourself a white leaf site when the dictator running the whole operation can nuke you off the internet simply because she got into a Twitter spat with a random person you don't even know? Now, this whole thing so far has just been lame Twitter drama. And if it were only lame Twitter drama, it wouldn't really be worth it for me to do a video on it. I enjoy watching Chud and Stardust stream about it. It's pretty fun to watch petty drama sometimes. But my personal interest on its own isn't enough for me to make a video on the topic. What I discovered after digging into White Nervosa myself, though, was... Let's start at the surface level stuff. Check out Vosh's comments on this shit show. 
Are you going to talk about Chud Logic editor's comments about White Nervosa? No, I hate getting involved in other people's drama. Besides, there's no point. Everything I've ever seen from Chud Logic editor made him look like a massive, like, spiteful retard who's, like, making an active effort to take the worst position on everything possible. Um, so there's not, like, I, I don't, like, yeah, I don't know. Like, White, White Nervosa is beefing with, like, a little, like, vomit puddle outside of a club at 3 a.m., I guess. I don't know. Chud Logic's editor is telling White Nervosa to commit suicide on Twitter. Yeah, he just, he just seems, like, insane. Hold on, pause it right here. Look who posted that Xanderhal tweet in Vosh's chat. Oh, it's Xanderhal. The only guy who would ever actually post a Xanderhal tweet anywhere. He's literally doing the tattletale thing. And if you look around online, you'll find a lot of these crumb tubers all trying to pile on Chud and trying to get Vosh to come out against him. We gotta cancel Chud logic, guys. Vosh's reply, though, is kind of anemic. On the one hand, he doesn't seem to care too much about this stuff. But on the other, he's completely fine with his mods behaving this way. Now, I personally don't think that's a problem. What my mods do outside of the context of my community isn't any of my business, and I extend that charitability to everyone. But that's not the rules the progs use. These people are losing their marbles over what DK does, and how Chud is obviously co-signing it all by continuing to employ him. So by that standard, Vosh is a worse person because of White Nervosa's terrible behavior. And the Chud deplatforming is just the tip of the iceberg. It's also how, while trying to get Chud deplatformed, they cry that any pushback they receive is harassment. This is literally the Janny cries out in pain as she strikes you. These people cry about body positivity and bigotry and trans nonsense, while at the same time using low testosterone as an insult. These people were the ones who face doxed Chud Logic in the first place. These people were the ones who thought it was a good idea to try and cover up Vosh's sexual harassment allegations. White Nervosa and her White Forest crowd are the gang of people who do the on-the-ground work of following around leftist streamers, most commonly Vosh, and cleaning up their messes, while serving as relentless attack dogs against anyone who dares to cross their parasocial daddies. Let's rewind. January 26th, 2018. Over a year before White Nervosa took the open source DGG code and made a closed for-profit fork of it. She was a member of Destiny's community, no surprise there, and debated him on the topic of deplatforming. I can't believe we're here, five years later, having the same fucking conversations. This stream actually isn't too spicy, and there's not one clip that I can pull out to explicitly prove what I'm saying. It's the tone of the thing, you kinda have to watch it for yourself. White Nervosa is clearly trying to nudge Destiny to the left throughout the conversation, with the general tenor of the conversation being, well, these rightoids are idiots, so you should be agreeing more with us leftoids, right? And Destiny, to his credit, doesn't take the bait. I need a criterion by which I can deplatform somebody that I can objectively argue for, which is difficult. The, the big problem with me for deplatforming is that to deplatform somebody, it, it almost feels like you're saying my philosophy is objectively superior Wowie. to yours. Because like, because I need because what I need is I need an argument by which I can deplatform another that wouldn't allow me to get deplatformed because I wouldn't want to be deplatformed, right? So how would society deplatform people like if if society were to do it? Um, for example, Twitter would deplatform people by if you share fake news or something like th these would be my criterion, right? Like if you post lies or something like that, right, right. you'd be deplatformed on Twitter or something. They they would ban your accounts or something like that. I don't know. They, you'd have to be very rigid and very specific in your set of criteria. For somebody like. Worski, like how is he supposed to platform somebody responsibly? Like what would he do to to actually not be a Nazi oh, anymore? Oh, so I'm not even on that, like platforming people responsibly. Like I, maybe, I don't know if Andy is, like if you bring on a bunch of Nazis and you don't challenge their opinion, I don't consider that to be falling under the purview of what I would be going after. It would be going after people who are intentionally or with gross negligence or recklessness spreading fake news. That would be like my starting ground. And th that's the only part that I'm at right now. So like if somebody wants to come on and argue like, listen, I want to create an ethno state. I want to get all the blacks and all the Mexicans out of here. Like, fine, that's fine. That person gets a platform. They can argue their shit. I love free speech. It's a goddamn beautiful thing. But if that guy wants to get up and make that argument by spreading a bunch of bullshit news around by linking of fucking Breitbart articles that have bullshit sources by quoting headlines and sniping data and not really making an honest argument. Fuck that guy. Take him out. So when you say Worski doesn't, or he's irresponsibly platforming people, should he not be allowed to carry on that platform? Or oh no, Andy can um Andy can platform however he wants. I just don't like that he doesn't acknowledge the reality of it. I, I mean, if he, I don't oh, think it should be yeah, like illegal. Now so it's an immoral issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One. Like a, right. I, I feel like though, like um, some countries really. Like, yeah, I, I feel like America has a good uh, freedom of press, freedom of uh, speech. Yeah. And you don't think that um, any other country 
should adopt or you rather reverse you don't think we should adopt any of the i don't know like shit like the germany shit like makes me pretty wary like you can't even do like that hail hitler salute or you can get in trouble you can get fined for that what is it why does that make you weary out of i don't know because i fuck if i want to go outside and do a hail hitler salute i don't want to get in trouble by the state it's fucking crazy to me fuck that shit i'm a free goddamn american well, you're a free American who supports responsible platforming. Yeah, but supporting responsible platforming doesn't mean that I all, uh, that I explicitly or implicitly Zardimus support is a STEM lord, like, ECH throwing people in jail for shit. Well, wait, there there is a such, there's a thing where like a line that irresponsible irresponsible speech could get you thrown in prison. I don't agree with that unless it's literally like direct calls to harm or something. So how indirect could you get? I don't fucking know. It's up to the courts to decide. Like, like I guess. if there was a, if there was a march and they chanted "kill all Jews" or "kill the Jews," is that direct or? That sounds pretty direct to me. Yeah, sure. Any any time you're saying "kill" and then something is probably over the line, <laughs> right? Yeah. No. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, what's your opinion of um, hate speech laws? I don't know. I would have to think really hard about it. My gut tells me that I think they're bad. I feel like the hate speech laws are there to give that pre- not necessarily preemptive strike, but like w when speech is basically kill all, kill all of, you know, this group. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think, I think that's why the hate speech laws are there, because they're not necessarily a threat towards any one person, but how, what do you charge them with otherwise? I mean, if that's what you mean by hate speech, like just like directly threatening somebody, then I'm probably... Well, no, no, right. It, it's, it's, it's more broad than just that, but... Sure. I, th I think it covers a lot of um, areas that need to be covered. Why aren't you a socialist? I love capitalism. Well, why can't you have a capitalist market system under socialist means? I mean, doesn't capitalism also speak to things like labor and whatnot? Which, and it doesn't let all that labor and everything work fundamentally differently in a socialist system? Sure, but wouldn't labor be more... Um, well, couldn't unions be a form of um, but unions don't oftentimes, well, hold on, I have to think about whether or not, do unions represent market power or not? Um, basically, whenever I ask, whenever I think about a question like this, what I'm trying to think of is, is there a market failure? And if there's a market failure, I'm always okay with, with some sort of government intervention, right? So just to trigger X skills me in the, in the chat, something like net neutrality, I would consider the, um, the natural, the, the I, ISPs being prone to being naturalistic monopolies, I would consider that a form of market failure. And market failures, I think, should always be remedied by some sort of government policy. So would a company being too big to have any threat of, of unionizing happen and where no other companies could compete, I mean, if that market failure exists, then yeah, I would be okay with remedying that with government shit. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, a lot of people in chat are bringing up that they live in countries where the lines are shared and, and ISPs have to rent the lines. I mean, like, that seems like the reasonable thing for me. Like, it's it's infrastructure that the whole city should care about because pretty much everybody has internet, so I'm okay publicly paying for it. We want to keep the lines running well, and then an ISP can open a data center and they can run, you know, they can hook up at the last, you know, towards them. Yeah, yeah. So, so do you think the U.S. should go in that direction? We should Probably. start at least. Yeah. Well, well, you sounded really hesitant there, buddy. Well, because everything, everything is informed. Everything is informed by the data. I don't know. Like, if 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 shit turns bad, then no. But like, that seems like a good a good thing to me. I think that seems like a good direction forward. But maybe there there might be a better argument against it. But yeah. Because I don't, I don't know what the argument would be for having independent lines or everybody owning their own lines or whatever. It just seems like a huge fucking waste. There's nothing really too bombastic in this video. No big blowout. White Nervosa just kind of meekly says, okay, after getting pushback every single time. It feels like she wants to pull him to the left, but also doesn't want to jeopardize her connection to him. Some of you might be saying, Dev, you're reading into this way too much. How can you possibly know that? Well, I know it because of a conversation that White Nervosa had with Vosh on her channel a year later on March 12th, 2019 titled, um, To Kill Cops. This is White Nervosa's first encounter with Vosh, and it's from this meeting that becoming a moderator and creating his website with the forked code that would eventually become White Leaf would spring. There's a few interesting things in this conversation. One, White Nervosa and Vosh both consider liberals, fascists, centrists, and rightists to all be the same thing. Kind of like how some rightoids think that all liberals, socialists, centrists, and leftists are the same thing as well. It's just centrism, right? It's just the typical centrist, right, that it's just like like until they die 
uh, you know, both sides are radical and both sides are equal and both sides need to come together, even though one side you know, is literally Nazis. Yeah. Um, I mean, that sounds like some of the centrists that I've discussed in the past. It is a, it is fucking incredible to me. It's amazing how, um, how subjective centrism is these days. Um, Nazism sure is closer to the center than I, uh, than I originally interpreted. Yeah, like, holy shit. I just can't even. Tokens like Dave Rubin, right? Like, he's a liberal, right? And like, right. This, these are his talking points and the same thing with Candace Owens and the same thing with Ben Shapiro and the same thing with, um, yeah, like it, it just goes on and on. But yeah, like I think like the biggest problem is people don't perceive how like harmful it is to public discourse and like centrism is fucking cancer for that. Just the ignorance of like, uh, the Overton window and again, like crypto fascism and I, I mean, I don't like, I don't know. Like I fucking hate <laughs> I fucking hate him. I hate him so goddamn much. Fascists and centrists. I don't know. Well, no, I don't yeah, know how to improve. It just improve. doesn't make any sense. Like, like, because I feel like every demonstrable study shows, like, like the, these are. This is supposed to be the facts over feels crowd. No, nope, so, like, no. Nope. Centrists have never read a study in their entire life. You can drop, <laughs> drop that right now. None of them have ever read a single study. Like centrists will acknowledge like psychological pitfalls, but then like they always fall back on this weird like. So, so it is like they are still right wing because they still always fall back onto individual like responsibility. Like, like, like for fascism, I view the only means is violence. You can only defeat fascism with violence, right? There is no argument. There is no like, like the centrists will always be drifted towards fascism. Um, so the only way to combat it is to per or dissuade fascists from protesting. So you have to hit them with violence. Two, stemming from that hatred of non-leftism, White Nervosa and Vosh talk about how the left does not exist in America because there is no revolutionary movement and how they want to be a part of one. I think, like, I don't fucking know, like, what makes a person want to be centrist? Is it they, they are like a conservative, but conservatism isn't cool because the average age of a Republican in America is 900, so they want to be like the edgy <laughs> fucking libertarian centrist, da, da da Is it because they once went to a college campus and they think they're kind of liberal and then... Uh, like some a woman with blue hair yelled at them and now they're a, like I, I don't i don't know whatever it is it stems from ignorance it's or yeah stupidity I, I, or fear. I think it's like like a little bit of just stunning kruger right they they just know like a little bit about politics and they think they know so much like they think they see like the extreme left and the extreme right but like they've just made this like false equivocation that just doesn't exist like there is no extreme left we will become the extreme left and we will stride across this great land um seize the means of production you know oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah let, let, let's well, yeah, i mean you know no, yeah, i mean let's say the, <laughs> you know the, okay. the car was going well, down can... the wrong street and you know charlottesville you know it's just white nervosa and vosh talk about how while a far left party winning elections would be ideal a revolutionary movement of working class people uh, storming the seat of government is also good too as long as they're leftist of course I think we need at least another century, maybe a century and a half of class consciousness spreading amongst the proles before we're ready to have a revolution. And when it happens, I would like it to happen in conjunction with a far left political party gaining prominence in the legislature, which would be able to secure a clean transition of power rather than the literal like citizens uh, revolt against the entire United States military storming Washington, taking control of the uh, Oval Office and um, you know, broadcasting yeah. a message of victory to the rest of the American people. I hope that in the future, the material circumstances eventually arrive at a point where, um, where they feel revolution is possible. They're okay if police die during this uprising. I presume you're not in favor of outlawing armor-piercing bullets. Fuck that. The only people who wear armor are cops. You're hoping for a revolution that may occur in more than a century but in the meantime we have bullets designed explicitly to kill cops oh i mean yeah whoa 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 wait 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 just because i advocate for a revolution in the future doesn't mean i'm not okay with cop killing now <laughs> 
but at the same time, they also don't want individuals to actually own guns. They want the guns to be owned by the community and kept in a community armory, which is just the state owning all the guns again with a new label attached. But ideally, I wouldn't like guns to be kept in the house. I would like the, like there to be like uh, community armories um, oh, yeah. uh, uh, that neighborhoods would have where like if there was ever a need to, uh, you could go to this like sort of collectively owned bunker maintained by the community well, and you've well, got I mean, your like fucking for... Mosins and M4s and shit. For rebranding, I, I I think like uh you could pitch it as the just a shooting range, right? Like you can even own like uh, automatic weapons, right? Just lock them up at the shooting range, and then you go yeah, there. Fuck and yeah, fuck yeah! Grenade sh- launchers, absolutely own that shit. Grenade launchers. I want the fucking anti tank mines. I want the god. I want the sniper rifles that can penetrate um, police uh, car doors. I want all that shit. I want them stocked, locked. I want the fucking barrel. I want the barrel, the chamber loaded. As you pick up the gun, I want us to be ready. They also have no real concern with what happens after the revolution either, as long as it moves the world ever more leftward. Is is your end game to abolish the state wholesale? I don't really care what happens after we overthrow capitalism. The material circumstances of the time will dictate what comes next. I just want to see us move forward, move leftward. And by the way, they don't believe that democracy can do this. I reject the idea that electoralism is the means by which we can overthrow the hold police have on disenfranchised communities. And finally, White Nervosa and Vosh describe hiding their true beliefs and subverting this system from the outside. Like, couldn't you, like, falsely moralize that to yourself, though? Because I feel like I could very easily fall into that, like, psychological trap where I could, like, moralize myself or, you know, say that I'm not doing tangible harm to public discourse. I'm just doing it for a paycheck to feed my family and to further, like, my own personal goals. I don't know if I could justify it ethically under my own, like, personal set of values, but I do know... I I think the the only way that I could come away from that thinking, like, okay, maybe I'm not going to blow my brains out in this gas station bathroom. The only way I could come out feeling like I'm not doing that is if I, um... Is if I thought, like, okay, I'm building power from within. But one day, I will unveil my true power level. Personally, on a personal level, I do not think that I could do it unless I had some sort of, like, secret underlying motive. Some way in which I felt I was actually supporting the leftist cause. I understand how other people could do it, though. Not everyone is pol- is as um, politically enfranchised as you or I have such strongly formed opinions, such a firm understanding of theory. The most refreshing part of all of this is seeing a more mask-off Vosh than he is nowadays. So then if you believe that the oh, Republicans have Rose intent right now to, to, to bring about an LGBT genocide, uh, how can you morally object against people right now taking Fighting up arms them. and going yeah. out and killing Republican lawmakers? Exactly. Uh, Republican lawmakers? Yes. Uh, well, it would be a utilitarian thing, wouldn't it? it would oh, be God, stop. Outcomes from stop. Them, so. Which, unfortunately, I don't really think it's possible to know that because I'm not God. But as a general rule, that type of thing doesn't tend to work out. But there are plenty of examples Ask him of this. in the history of lawmakers. If it did work out, if they were able to on, kill on lawmakers facing at the very least with no consequences, would it be feel that morally justified? Violence. Question um, mark. You know, are are a legitimate component Ask of democracy. Let's hear it. Process. Make him answer our question. Power are trying to use that power to suppress minority groups. You you talked about the, the the utilitarian thing before. So if it would be possible, um, if you could, if it were to be possible to get away with um, yeah, killing Republican lawmakers with no consequences, uh, would it then be? Are you a, be wait? Are you actually fed posting at me right now? You're glowing in this convo. Wait, are you being fed these questions? Ah, uh, he won't answer that question. I knew he wouldn't. I knew he wouldn't answer that question. He won't do it. He won't do it. What a fucking Weasley little. Coward. 2023 Vosh is too scared to say what he really thinks. He likes the Twitch bucks too much, so he hides his power level. And Vosh on IRL panels? Forget it. He gives the most milk toast progressive opinions you can imagine. If you look at any major social movement, you will see disinformation. That was the case with BLM, that was the case with the Civil Rights Movement, the Suffragette Movement, the Abolitionist Movement, the American Revolution, and everything prior to it. Misinformation is just a part and parcel of life. You try to minimize it, but at the end of the day, it is something that will be produced and sometimes focused on. You have to take a look at the underlying social motivations and the processes that led to that. So with regards to the January 6th stuff, again, you can, as you said, normalize very terrible stuff with the wrong descriptive understanding of the world. You can take just about Every heinous totalitarian ideology that's ever festered on this planet, you know, whether you want to go Nazism or Stalinism, Pol Pot, wherever you want to go, if you fed a person 
the right set of facts about the world, big air quotes, by the way, you could approximate those ideologies in them. Compare that take to this one, and you'll see exactly what I mean. There is not a good base of conservatives in this country. These people are no different from the Ku Klux Klan. They are no different from the fucking white nationalists who ran terror campaigns during, in the South back during the 1920s, 30s, 40s. They are absolutely no different from the frothing at the mouth, screaming fucking pasty mayo people who are throwing rocks at black folk going to integrated schools. There is no difference. If you have a conservative family member, I'm sorry, they're part of the problem. If you have a conservative friend, I'm sorry, they're part of the problem. History will crush these people beneath its feet. Every single time a political party has tried this shit, every single time they've gone down this road, they have been reviled through the generations. There is no good history for these people. And every conservative, every Republican is on the hook for this. Every last one of them. These people present one view when they're in real life and being challenged directly, and another view entirely when they feel like only their community, their people are watching, and they're safe from the eyes of outsiders. They are just as subversive as the fascists they claim to oppose. They tell the big lie just as much. They, too, hide their real politics until the moment is right. 3. Stemming from their subversiveness, White Nervosa and Vosh both admit that the reason they hang around Destiny is to convert him to their political beliefs, and to pull his audience into their sphere of influence. I, I've seen, like, yeah, you, you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Destiny on economics, and I, I, I kind of accidentally push him further away because I push him towards getting rid of a uh, minimum, minimum wage. So. Oh no! You t I think, but, uh, I honestly... The best way to radicalize Destiny leftward is to, if you're a leftist, is to not talk with him because he gets really fucking angry and defensive um, talking to leftists. I feel, I, I almost feel for him because he, he's like, because he's a lib boy, you know, he's a good old lib cut. Yeah. And, um, and because he gets popular debating all these idiot right wingers, um, people like sort of throw him in with the lefties. But now he feels like this performative need to distance himself from them so he can stand alone on his own little, like, yeah, island. yeah, he definitely loves, like, it, it's almost like a virtue signal, like, that he loves to, like, say, like, oh man, I guess you're a communist, right? Like, 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 uh, in a condescending way in a discussion. Um, we'll get him one day. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I feel like, he, like, like, again, like, just by accident, right? Just, by him, I mean, because fuck, he used to be a libertarian. Yeah. So he's on the right track. He just has to get there. White Nervosa also decries the equivalence between the radical left and the radical right as a symptom of fascism, which Destiny did in their previous conversation, but she was too cucked to speak up about. Like Dave Rubin, I think it's an easy example that shouldn't have a platform. Well, no, I'm not sure. I would have to think about Rubin. So again, I want to be really, really, really careful here, okay? So remember primarily, my value system is usually going after what is true. I don't care about political agendas. I have no desire to push a political agenda whatsoever. I don't care. I have no interest, no desire. So I think that all of offensive ideas should be spoken about. So pedophilia, incest, Ku Klux Klan, Nazism, ethnostates, all of that shit, communism, whatever the fuck, all of these ideas should be up for discussion. I'm okay with that. And I'm okay with people providing a platform to discuss these ideas. The ideas don't bother me. It's just engaging in disinformation or misinformation or reckless, um, like reckless reporting that, that, that is like horrendously disingenuous. Yeah, I, I don't have, um, I don't want to name drop too many people, um, but the reason I specifically think of Ruben instantly is because he really, really interviews a lot of people who are far to the alt-right, uh -huh. and even further so, and I feel like platforming those people and giving them just uh, basically a softball interview to pitch their platform I feel like really does a disservice to everybody that's watching. I don't dis I, I like don't that, agree with that. I mean, it, it gets the ideas out there. Even if you might find them offensive or horrible, it just gets the ideas out there. I mean, do you make all softball interviews illegal then, or? Well, no, not at all. But I mean, isn't that, isn't that your point though? Because isn't that sort of fake news on on steroids? Is no, I don't think so. The pinnacle of that. Well, like, so here's a question: If you want to go after people that give softball interviews to extremists, what about somebody that has a channel where they interview like contrapoints, or they interview um, Sean and Jen or somebody, and they give them all softball questions? Would that be? No, I feel like that's entirely different. If your channel give me is some Wowie's PLS, very clearly a stilted uh, slant. You know, you're just an interview channel. But Dave Rubin, I don't feel like is presented as such. It's it's presented as 
the marketplace of ideas, which it very clearly isn't. Yeah, maybe. I don't so know. So I guess it's, it's really I like about to focus on branding fake and news. presentation. I like to focus on fake news because I can do a hard line objective, like, this is bullshit. You're screenshotting article headlines. You have no fucking idea what you're talking about. Like, you're, fuck, you're lying through your teeth. That's easy to target. Saying somebody like Dave Rubin disingenuously, disingenuously presents his policy, I feel like that line is a lot harder to walk. Yeah, maybe so, maybe so. Mm-hmm. This is all a year and a half before Destiny and Vosh stopped publicly being friends after that infamous Kyle Rittenhouse debate. Destiny always described Vosh as his friend. White Nervosa spent time in his community as a noted orbiter, but it seems to be increasingly obvious, at least to me, that these people were simply using him the whole time. Four, and to tie it all into one neat package, Vosh and White Nervosa advocate for direct violence against fascists, keeping in mind that to them, fascists are not only fascists, but liberals, centrists, and rightists. And she even readmits as much in the statement. And I feel like we can win on like, uh, like socialism because it, uh, emotional appeals or, or emotional propaganda is very, very easy. How do you win on like against fascism? Like, because that's really tough. Like, you know, they, they show like the other and they're going to take, you know, your kid's job. Like, I mean, I don't I don't think you can argue with fascists. I think they just need to be killed or something. No, no, I don't disagree with you, but I mean like from a, like for attacking uh like centrists, like how do you attack especially since it's so crypto in the first place? Like in, it, like it's not usually Charlottesville and like it's overness. I mean, ideally, I think a lot of centrists are crypto fascists too and they get the bullet as well, but the system we live in today is full of violence as it exists and to oh, right, ignore right, that right, system, yeah, yeah that, like, oh god that fucking triggers me this is literally it's, well, so, well like i mean people don't realize that a government is just soci uh, society agreeing on violence like you know like like if guns are being passed around like fucking i i mean I, like i i don't know fucking well, like, let's what, go. What matters is if you see me in the street with my Mosin, okay? What matters is that you take aim at I join you with two. Of me. Okay, all right. Yeah. My fucking comrade. <laughs> hey, Destiny, being a liberal, is only there to either be subverted or destroyed. And because they both failed to subvert him, and they're both too bitch baby to actually do anything outside their own houses, destroying him online is the next best thing. With all of this additional context, look at White Nervosa's statement on the Rose Wrist thing again. Allow this to be a larger statement on those who look towards DGG for a place to be rather than a place to move on from. They don't watch your content, never. You're nothing but a tool to them. This isn't picking sides. This is understanding that DGG isn't a place for growth. On the one hand, you're entirely wrong. There's a ton of content creators who have benefited greatly from the Destiny bump. Erudite, Stardust, Counterpoints, even Vosh. But the difference is that they took the exposure Destiny gave them and then made something that was new, something that was them, using the opportunity properly. White Nervosa didn't. Like DK said, everything she's done is simply a copy of the work of better people. On the other hand, though, this mindset of White Nervosa's pretty much proves my point that her and her crowd are just users. To them, DGG is a stepping stone, to appeal to when it builds them up, and to attack when it builds them up. Vosh and Hassan did this to Destiny. A bunch of crumb tubers did it too, Booksmarts, Merrick, Xanderhal. This is also what's happening to Chud Logic right now. And now that Twitch politics has become an insular, lefty-only space, they're turning on each other for clout, as they always do. Right now, as I'm recording this, Bad Bunny and Keffels are getting into a fight because they're both fucking irrelevant, contributing nothing of substance to anything, and despite their public exclamations of commitment to the leftist cause, they're only here to make money. And yes, underneath all of the rhetoric, that's all it is for any of these leftoids. You don't need to actually build socialism if you're a rich socialist, because you've got the correct beliefs. So whatever is a good consequentialist end for you is what the good is. In fact, with White Nervosa, it's even more blatant, because the main reason she even tried to be a streamer before the whole White Forest thing is so that she could stream snipe other people's auto hosts and turn those donations into cocaine. And no, this isn't just some Kiwi Farms rumor, though they get a kick out of it too. This is something that is actually confirmed by her. Yeah, I mean, I just love the EU streams. Uh, I'm trying to jack the auto host from uh, everybody else, so, you know, we start early as fuck. Listen, just know that if you support the White Leaf Project, all that money is going straight up her nose. At this point, let's check out the big picture. White Nervosa is a core part of Vosh's community, paid by him to rip off Destiny's code for his, and later, all of BreadTube's use. This entire group shares the same ethics, which constitute a violent support of revolutionary leftism, without any concern of the actual behaviors involved, or concern for any of the outcomes beyond what is simply good for them. And beneath that mask, what is good is whatever makes them money. 
and people who disagree with what they consider the good to be, exist only to be exploited by them, to either be converted to their cause or discarded and destroyed. And, in order to accomplish all of this, these people are willing to lie, to cheat, to steal, to attack you in the street if they have the opportunity, to deprive you of your income so that you and your dependents starve, to go against every stated value that they claim to hold, including things like universal human rights or democracy. There is a direct through line between the rhetoric these people used in 2018 and 2019 and their morally reprehensible behaviors today. They were always going to become this. This is why people in my area of the internet spoke out about it all those years ago. We all told Shu on head she was going to get backstabbed. She didn't believe us, and here we are. I remember DMing Chud Logic in like April 2022 or something, saying, I bet Demon Mama backstabs you within the next six months. And he was like, I don't know, man. And lo and behold, she did. When I spoke to Dylan Burns, I told him, there will probably eventually be backlash for you and I talking, especially if you do it regularly. And it hasn't come yet, but you know, it will. I don't agree with Sargon or Arch Warhammer all the time. We have some very rowdy debates in private, but we never violate the meta ethic that is the friendship. Over some political disagreement, why would we? Even though they're drifting away from me politically and I agree with them less and less over time, they are vastly better people than any of these bread tube fucks. White Nervosa herself is just a blip on the radar. She will fade in the same way that Keffels is fading, now that her Drop Kiwi Farms campaign has failed spectacularly. Even if you were brain dead enough to be interested in the bread tube socialist type of thing, all of her content is just what the larger bread tubers say, only strictly worse. Her only claim to fame is exactly as DK said. She stole the work of better people. She enriched herself, temporarily, off that work. She has no ability to innovate on that foundation. And so, when the ecosystem moves on, she will be left behind. Her one claim to fame is fleeting fast, and nothing else she's ever done has any substance whatsoever. She will one day wake up and discover that the cocaine money is dried up, nobody's keeping up with her anymore, nobody's using the few dollops of value she stole from others anymore. Theirs is a community of users in many ways, and White Nervosa is rapidly reaching the end of her usefulness. I don't know why she thinks she won't be discarded in the same way that she and her ilk have discarded so many others.